In this video, we're going to talk about integrals of further transcendental functions. And we're going to start with this example. And it says to evaluate uh, the definite integral from 0 to 1 of dx over x squared plus 1. We're also given a rule that says that the integral of dx over x squared plus 1 is equivalent to the inverse of tangent x plus c. Now, I want you to understand that if you were to rewrite this, say, for example, the definite integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over x squared plus 1 dx, this is the same exact thing as what we started with. Okay, so let's say you couldn't recognize this rule immediately. And let's say you tried a couple different ways of going about this. This could be one way to start that process. Now, when I take a look at this, there's still no rule that would help me. There's 1 over x that would equal logarithms, but this isn't quite like that. This is an entire argument in the denominator. You might also try to rewrite it like this as well, without a fraction. So it would be x squared plus 1 to the negative 1 dx. And the problem comes when we are going to see a negative 1, because when you integrate, you have to add 1 to it. And negative 1 plus 1 is 0. So that in itself is its own problem. What you want to do is try to see if on your cheat sheet, on your rules, if that there's a rule for this. And of course there is, um, because nothing else works. So there has to be a rule for it. So what we're going to do is we're going to say that this integral, since it matches our rule completely, is we're going to say that this is equivalent to the tangent, or inverse tangent, sorry, of x. And we're not going to add the c. We're not going to add the c because we actually have a definite integral. We want to evaluate this from 0 to 1. So just like in our first FTC, we're going to plug in 1 first, and then we're going to plug in 0 and find the difference, which will look something like this. So what we're going to do next is just evaluate. And tangent is equal to 1 at pi over 4, so that is, that's its inverse, and tangent is 0 when x is 0. So we have pi over 4 minus 0, which is, of course, equal to pi over 4. And that's going to complete this problem. In the next example, we're going to also evaluate a definite integral, this time from 0 to 3 fourths of dx over root 9 minus 16x squared. And we are going to try to use this rule, which says that the integral of dx over root of 1 minus x squared. And if you'll notice, what we're given here kind of looks like it could be in that format if we handle this correctly. And when we do, we should be able to use this rule to equal the inverse sine of x plus c. So the first thing you want to keep your eye on is that in order to use this rule, this first digit here must be a 1. So the only way to make this a 1 is to factor something out of it. In this case, it would be 9. So let me show you what that would look like. And of course, if we're going to factor out a 9 from the 9, we're also going to have to factor out a 9 from 16, which is just going to give us a little fraction. So this is what it's going to become. So we're going to have our integral from 0 to 3 fourths of dx over, and that 9 does not go on the outside of our radical. We want that to stay there. Otherwise, this rule that we want to use won't happen. So we're going to do the 9 here, and then we're going to open ourselves a pair of parentheses. And we're going to try to figure out what needs to go back inside. So 9 times 1 will give us the 9 that's under the radical. We need a minus sign. Now, to factor out a number that's not a nice factor, you just write it as a fraction. So this is 16 over 9x squared. So if I were to distribute the 9, I would, in fact, get the original part back. So once you do that, we can actually take the square root of this 9 and put it on the outside of our radical. So that's what we're going to do next. And I'm going to start my process down here. So integral from 0 to 3 fourths of dx all over 3, and then square root of 1 minus 16 ninths x squared. 
So now the next part that we have to take care of is this, the x squared. Now, granted, we have the x squared here, okay, which is good, but it needs to be an entire thing squared. What we're going to have to do is take the square root of this number to help us out. And in order to square root a fraction, you just square root the numerator and you square root the denominator. So let me show you what that's going to look like. We're going to have the integral from 0 to 3 fourths of dx over 3 root 1 minus, and then here comes the squared part. So we're going to have an open pair of parentheses with a square on the outside, and we just have to figure out what goes inside. The x can be there. Okay, because when x is squared, we'll get x squared. And then the square root of 16 is 4, and the square root of 9 is 3. So that's where we are, and we are now in the proper format that we need to be in to use our rule. So the question lies in what am I supposed to do with this if it doesn't match my rule? And the answer is to use your substitution rules with you. So for example, in order to make this look identical to what I need, I would have to have my u for substitution be equal to this part, the 4 thirds x. Okay, so when I do that, then this entire part will become a u, and then I'll be in the exact form that I need to be in. So we're going to do du. Okay, and the derivative of 4 thirds x is just 4 thirds dx. And remember that if you have this situation where this number does not exist in your original integral, to cancel it out, you just multiply the integral by its reciprocal. And the reciprocal of this would be 3 fourths. So I'm going to put that on the outside of my radical. That will cancel out the 4 thirds that I'm getting here. Okay, so we are completely ready to rewrite this all with u's. So we're going to have the integral from 0 to 3 fourths of dx over 3 root 1 minus u squared. And I forgot to change my dx on the numerator to du. So I'm going to just fix that real quick. Okay, and then we want to bring out that 3 fourths again to the outside of our integral because that's going to cancel that um, 4 thirds that we previously got. Now, there's something really cool about um, definite integrals when you use u substitution. You can actually change the upper and lower bounds of your integral to match the function for u. That way you don't have to do any substitution in the end. So let me show you what I mean. So we're going to change this and this because those numbers related to dx. Now they're being related to du. And if we change them now, we won't have to do any more substitution in this entire problem. So this is kind of nice. So the way to change these is by looking at your piece of substitution. In this case, it was u equals 4 thirds x, okay? And so what we're going to do is we're going to plug in these x values where x is going to be. So this is going to be u equals 4 thirds times 3 fourths, because that's my x, and that's equal to 1. So that's going to become my new upper bound. And on the bottom, we're going to do u equals 4 thirds times 0, which is 0. So my integral all together, ready to go, is 3 fourths, definite integral from 0 to 1 now, of du over 3 root of 1 minus u squared. And the hard part is done. So we just have to break this down using our rule, and then we're going to continue to plug in our numbers. So the last thing we're going to do is get this 3 taken care of. This is, in fact, a 1 over 3. We're just going to move that to the outside as well and multiply those two fractions together. Okay, so 3 times 1 is 3. 4 times 3 is 12. That reduced 1 fourth. So now I have 1 fourth the integral from 0 to 1 
of du over root 1 minus u squared. I did it. So this now matches my rule completely, and I'm ready to plug in my values. I'm going to do that on the next page. So this is now going to look like this, completely integrated. So that entire integral broke down to the inverse of sine. My 1 fourth is still present, and we're going to um, evaluate this from 0 to 1. Now, an option, if you want it to, is if you happen to have a coefficient like this, you're welcome to put it on the outside of all your other business that you're going to have going on. So that we can just focus on the part inside, minusing the part um, for, from our lower bound. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug in our upper bound first. This is inverse sine of what's going to be 1, and then we're going to have inverse sine of 0. And now it's time to figure out what those values are. So we're going to do inverse sine of 1 first. So sine has a value of positive 1 at pi over 2, and sine has a value of 0 at 0. And pi over 2 minus 0 is, of course, pi over 2. So we just have to worry about multiplying these two numbers together, which is going to give us the answer of pi over 8. And, of course, you are welcome to use your calculator to check your work on these until your skill level increases. So we're going to do one more example, and then we're going to be done. Okay, so our third example is going to be to evaluate the definite integral from 3 to 5 of 7 to the x dx. And the rule we're going to need to use is the integral from any number to the x power dx is equal to b to the x over ln of b plus c. So the way to start this is by first recognizing that this is indeed what we need. Um, we cannot evaluate this with our basic integral rules because in order to do that I'd have to add 1 to an x and that's not going to work out very well. So in this case, our b is going to be the 7, okay, and that's really all you need to recognize for this particular problem, and we're going to go ahead and um, start writing our answer. Uh, so we're going to do, um, it, let's see, this is equal to b to the x, so that's going to be 7 to the x over ln of 7. And of course, we're not going to do the plus c because this is a definite integral. We're going to do this from 3 to 5, and we're going to go ahead and uh, evaluate this. And I'm just going to set it up for you real quick because in order to find the ln of 7, we're going to need a calculator. So we're going to do 7 to the 5th power over ln of 7 minus 7 to the 3rd power over ln 7. And when you use your calculator for, get, for this, you should get approximately, um, oops, not zero, sorry, uh, 8,460.8-ish. Okay, so that's all you need to do if you have an exponential function. Okay, it's a pretty clean, easy rule to use, even though there's logarithms in there. Um, just use your calculator to do that. You won't be asked to do any of this by mental math because it's just not possible. So that's it. That will complete this tutorial.